What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So in my last video, I went over unboxing, setting up and testing out the Monpour GI60 fiber laser. And today we're gonna to be going over how to engrave on coins. And this is a coin that I did. This is the Terminator coin. As you can see right here, the front and the back side, Cyberdyne Systems, Skynet. So I designed this one and engraved it on this brass coin. So I'm gonna go over all the settings that I used and how to get it set up. So let's jump right in, let's head over to my computer and we'll go over all of that right now. Okay, so here we are over in Lightburn and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is draw a circle about the size of your coin. And I think mine is about 31 millimeters. So I'll just draw a quick circle and I'll change these settings to 31 and I will get this centered right into the page middle. So next you'll need a 3D height map, which I designed my own, but if you don't have one, you can go ahead and head on over to 3dgrayscale.com and you can see a bunch of different ones here. And my Terminator one, I actually posted on here and I can type in Terminator. And this is the one that I'll be using. So I did post this on here, so if you guys are looking to download this one and you like it, feel free to support me and spend $1.99 and you'll get both the front and the back. But since I designed this one, I already have it saved on my computer, so I'll go back over and I'll import this into Lightburn. So here I have the height map and I will just resize this to make it smaller to about the size of the circle that I have. And to make it easy, I just kind of hide the output and that kind of graze it all out so I can see that outline of the ring. And if you hold down control, you can resize it in the center without it kind of going all askew or anything like that. And I'll resize it so it's about that size and I can zoom in to kind of make sure that it's not really going outside of the area. I want it right on the edge. So right about there seems good. So next, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hide the actual image First, I'll click on this outer ring and I'm actually gonna duplicate this because I'm gonna use this as a tool path. So I'll click on duplicate and I'm just gonna click on this T1 and that actually makes it a tool path. So for the meantime, I can hide that one and then I can undo this. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to fix this outer ring if I hide this. I'll click on this, I'm actually just gonna make this a line and I can click on both of these and apply a layer mask. And what that does is removes all the background. So all we have is the coin itself. So now I can highlight both of these and I can actually flatten the image mask and that will make it just one complete image and that's it. So next I'll go ahead and I'll duplicate this image. And I'll click duplicate and I'll set this as 02. And I'll just move this right above it so we have one and two, and one I'm gonna use as the deep pass, and the second one I'll use as the cleaning pass. And I could just label this cleaning, and the first one I'll just do deep. So now you can hide these and show them and, and see what you're working on. And you can see now I have all the passes that I'm going to need. I have the tool, the tool path that I'm going to need just to outline it when I'm setting it up on the laser. I have the cleaning pass, and I have the deep pass. So now I'll set up the deep pass first. So I can just go ahead and set the output for that for now so I can see it a little bit better. I'll double click on it and for this deep pass, so for the settings I'm going to use, I'm gonna use 3150 millimeters per second. I'll use a max power of 90. The frequency based on my machine, I'm gonna use at 46. And I'll do 200 nanoseconds for the Q pulse. The line interval, I'm going to set to 0 0.025. Scan angle, I will just leave at zero and I will put this on 3D sliced mode. Now, if you don't have 3D sliced mode, it's probably because you're not using a Galvo laser and you're probably using a diode or something like that and 3D sliced isn't available for that option for those machines, so you might not see it. But I will keep this as fill shapes at once and I'm going to set the number of passes to 256 that's because in a typical grayscale image, you have 256 shades of gray. 
Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do 256 passes, and the reason for that is because there might not actually be 256 shades of gray. There might only be, you know, 180 or something like that. So keep that in mind. I'm just setting it to 256 because I don't really know exactly how many shades of gray are in this image. So I really can't go wrong if I set it at 256. Everything else, I'm going to leave the same. Bidirectional scanning, I will leave on. And I think that's about it. So I can go ahead and I can just look at preview. And it's gonna raster every single one of those layers. But we'll let this run for a second and we'll kind of see how this is gonna preview once this is finished. All right, so here you can see the preview. And if I go all the way back to the beginning, we can kind of see the passes as they go if I go a little bit slowly. So you can see that it's going to do each shade of gray individually. And there you go. There you have a preview. So I think that looks just fine. I'll click OK. And then as far as the cleaning pass goes, I'm going to keep the speed the same. I'm going to set that to 3150. The frequency, though, I'm going to put at 75. The Q pulse I will leave at 200 as well. And the max power, I just bumped down to 35%. Everything else, I'm going to leave the same. I will set this to 0.025. I'll keep this on 3D sliced, and I'm not going to do 256 passes. I'm just going to do, I don't know, five. And that should be good. Just a quick kind of cleanup to go over it once it's kind of finished, and this isn't really going to be burning much into it. Just, just a quick cleanup. And I can just do a quick preview on this one. And you can see here that it's only just doing a few layers, and that's it. And that's just to get a nice quick cleanup over it. And that seems just fine. So now I'm ready to go head over to the laser. I'll get this coin set up, and I'll get it all framed. And then we'll be right back. So before you get started, you do want to make sure that you have this focused to where it needs to be. And for mine, I have it set to 338 millimeters just from the top of this machine to where the top of the coin is. So right about there looks good. So here I have my blank brass coin and I'll just set it down roughly right around there where the little dot is. And then we'll go ahead back over to the computer. We'll get this all framed up and then we'll start burning this and see how this turns out. So now that I have it set up on the machine, I can go ahead and I can click on frame. And if I click on the tool layers only, it's only going to frame up this this tool path that I set up for just a circle, and you'll be able to see that here. Here you can see the little circle outline that it creates from that tool path. So all I wanna do is get this centered right into the middle of the coin, right about there. So now that I have this all framed up, all I have to do is go ahead and click start, and it's gonna go through the deep pass, and then it'll do the cleaning pass, and that'll be it and then it will stop. So I'm not going to put this on repeat or run continuously or anything like that. So I'll just go ahead and click start and I will run a time lapse so you can see this. But let's get started. Let's click start. Let's see how this turns out. All right, so the first part of this coin has finished, and if you look down at the bottom, you can see that it completed the job in 29 minutes and 20 seconds, and that was for both the deep and the cleaning pass. So let's go take a look over at the coin, and let's check it out. So here's the coin. It's all finished. You can see some of the, the brass dust kind of blew off. I do have a fan going right over here that's blowing right out my window. So I don't actually have an exhaust system set up yet, but it's actually on the way, so I'm just waiting for it. So in the meantime, improvise, but you do wanna have good ventilation because all this dust will go blowing everywhere. But if we take a look at the coin, here I think you can see it looks pretty good. Now I will, all I really will need to do to this is just take a little wire brush to it and that's about it, so I'm not too concerned about the actual details at the moment. But I'm going to flip this over. We're going to do the other side now, and we'll do the Skynet one. And I won't go through all the settings again because I just already did that. I'll just kind of quickly just go showing it set up and, and go from there. So we'll get this all back set back up. We'll engrave the other half, and we'll see how that turns out. So back over in Lightburn, I do have the Skynet logo all set up as well. 
And here you can see I have the deep engraved pass, which all the settings I did leave the same, as well as the cleaning. So I do have this all framed up. I'm just going to go ahead and hit go. We'll do a time lapse on this as well. And we'll come back right after that. All right, so this side has finished and it only took 18 minutes and 18 seconds. Now I did already turn it off. So you can see here, error disconnected, so you can't actually see the time, but I did look at it and it said 18 minutes and 18 seconds. So it definitely was faster than the other side of the coin, but let's go take a look at it now and let's see how these turned out. So let's take a look at that half. And as you see, I think that looks pretty awesome. So all that's left now to do is just clean this up with a wire brush. So I'll go do that. We'll get this cleaned up. Let's see how this turns out. So in order to clean this up, I am just going to use this little bristle brush that I have on the back of my rotary tool and simply go over it. So there you have it. I will just go over it real quickly with the polish and see if I can get this just a little bit more shiny. All right, so here is the finished coin, all polished up. And I think that came out pretty awesome. All right, so there you have it. I did put the coin in a nice little case and I will be giving this coin away in the next few weeks. And in order to win this, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos, but just go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think and I'll be picking a winner shortly. Now, if you are using a fiber laser, you may have to adjust some of the settings, but for me, I'm using the Monport GI60 fiber laser and the 200 millimeter lens. So if yours is a little bit different and it's 50 watt or 100 watt or 20 watt or something like that, you may have to adjust some of the power settings and things like that and speeds. But for this machine, I think this worked perfectly and I'm super happy with it. But that's gonna be it for this video, everybody. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.